Welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in our Palo Alto studio having a CUBE conversation. We're getting ready for the madness of the fall conference season to hit us full force. So we're excited to have things a little bit quiet this week and have a special guest. He's Jet Ayers. He is the North American CEO and the global CMO for IGEL. Great to see you. Well, great to be here. Thanks for uh, inviting me. Yeah. It's, I know a lot of uh, luminaries in the tech industry have sat in this uh, chair. That's so right. It's an honor to, uh, to have a chance to chat well, with you Well, thank you, I appreciate that. So give, uh, for the people that aren't familiar with IGEL, give us kind of the IGEL 101. Yeah, so I wasn't actually that familiar with IGEL two years ago, and I've spent you know, over a decade in the end user compute space, so they were a little bit of a mystery, I think, to most people in the US. However, the company's been around for over 20 years. They're actually the number one thin client player in Germany since 2006. So what they really uh, specialize in is a Linux read-only operating system that's fused to a management console that just really works for these cloud delivered desktops and applications, right? And so a little bit shrouded in sort of this world of thin client hardware, but the company is really a software company. Right. And so the opportunity for me was to, to really help them build their US operation, but probably more importantly, actually put the right uh, sort of US marketing prowess and kind of English first uh, we, we got out and kind of rewrote their marketing playbook and we really have uh, exposed the IP of this beautiful light Linux OS right. and the management tool, which you know, couldn't have been at a better time in terms of what's happening right. in the industry. So just to call those three things out specifically, so it's, it's a light OS that's Linux based for x86 devices. Exactly. And so you're working with Citrix and, and VMware and a lot yeah. of those platforms. I mean, there's 17 different protocols that right. it works with out of the box. So really when you think about you know, Microsoft RDP, Parallels, Ericom, some of the some things that you know back in the history of end user compute, it, 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 we still out of the box are synced up with those technologies. Right. But the primary ones today are Citrix and VMware and Microsoft, and you know, we soon will so, soon be doing some things with Amazon as well, working with them to be their first Linux client for workspaces. Right. So, so. we talked a little bit before we turn the cameras on. You know, the bring your own device thing. Uh, we saw first in mobile phones in a big, big way, and then you know people are bringing their laptops and all kinds of, of interesting stuff. At the same time, you've got kind of this cloud move with with centralized control, and you know you don't have all this kind of rogue stuff and you know simple right. cloud things like I don't have the right Excel spreadsheet on this laptop; it's right. on my home desktop. Um, so you guys, you guys are kind of riding that wave, um, but enabling a really interesting play on it. You enable a BYO. D, but you actually have an opportunity to basically supplant that overlay, I don't know what's the right verb, mm -hmm. to enable a secure, lightweight, um, centralized control. Yeah, so there's really three ways to get this operating system, right? You can get it on the traditional hardware form factors that you find for most thin clients, right? We got kind of a entry level, mid, high level, all in one. And then we have the ability to convert a device, so we would actually wipe the entire operating system off the device and just you know, have the OS boot to the iGel OS. But then really uh, two years ago we came out with this, and this is the, uh, what we call the UD Pocket. It's uh, you know, about the size of your thumbnail. It's a hardened USB read-only stick. It has the same OS that the hardware has and the converter software has. It's just a bootable, right? So I could plug this into that laptop you have there and you would boot to a secure you know, environment, a Linux operating system and we'd point it to whatever cloud delivery service that your, you know, the cube was using, so for right. Citrix or VMware. So yeah, this has opened up a whole lot of new use cases. It sort of changed how people think about thin clients too, right? They used to right. sort of think thin client, kiosk, task worker, not necessarily the CEO of a company or a right. knowledge worker or the, you know, a physician running an emergency room you know, uh, might want to have their own device, the same device they use at home. Right. Um, so yeah, this has opened up a lot of interesting use cases, contractors, interns. Um, we even see it being used for um, people um, in environments and hospitals where they keep a, a stash of these uh, for high availability against ransomware, right? You've seen these hospitals right, basically right. being attacked. Right. Uh, what, what they would do is go and put these in, boot to a, a secondary, you know, Epic or Cerner environment and uh, you know, this is kind of their way of not knowing which device is infected. They could just easily bypass that, that device, boot to this read-only operating system. It's a real game changer in terms of it opening really up, not only, not only uh, removing all the vulnerabilities that come with, with kind of a classic laptop situation, 
Uh, but even giving the things new life, right? Enabling them to, to, to kind of be reborn yeah. really as a, as, a, as a thin, or excuse me, as a light, as a light client. Yeah, we see three reasons why people are, are uh, buying iGel today. And you know, it's fun for me because I get to go out and you know, talk to a lot of customers and partners. You know, we're a 100% um, partner-oriented organization, which is fun for me since I spent 20 years as a partner. But uh, what's been really fun is that it's a C-level conversation. You wouldn't think thin client, I can go talk to a CEO or CFO or, or a CIO. But this is a game changer and it's, a, uh, it's really three things, right? We can save people money, which people like that, right? right when you can right. save a company from having to go purchase 5,000 new endpoints. Uh, we just had a hospital in Texas. They were about to buy 5,000 new endpoints. That's about $5 million, right? Um, we walked in and sold them uh, 5,000 converter licenses for about a half a million dollars. So they saved four and a half million dollars um, in not having to buy new hardware. And then, you know, the second piece is the operational headcount savings. When you think about managing windows today, it's you know, maybe great organizations, one person can do 500 devices maybe, if you're lucky and you really have all the right tools. With iGel, we have numbers like one person managing 30,000 devices in retail, you know, places where you don't have a lot of smart hands. Right. And then the, the third reason why, you know, we can talk to a lot of CISOs now too, right? As people uh, are gravitating towards Linux um, because of the challenges with, you know, Windows and managing Windows and securing Windows, and Linux, when I first started, people said kind of, don't talk about Linux, you know, it's maybe kind of a, a bad word and people get, you know, uh, scared. Right. Today we walk in and we lead with, this is a very mature Linux operating system. And, uh, you yeah, we have a fantastic security roadmap. And, and 20 yeah. years of history, right? So you've yeah. got, you've got, you've got uh, institutional a foundation that you can build off. Well, it's funny on the Linux thing, right? Because I'm sure they said the same thing when they wanted to roll Linux into the data centers back in the day. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is the year where we believe, and IDC is tracking this pretty closely, that this is the year where um, on the endpoints end of this thin client, you know, uh, you're going to see Windows uh, is, is going to be surpassed by Linux. Right. And that, that tracker that IDC does doesn't even track the ones that are being repurposed, right? Where Linux is going in because it's just going in on old hardware. Right. So just on the new hardware, it's going to be about 40% uh, Linux and 40% Windows. And then there's you know, some, some other you know, operating systems right. out there. But yeah, this is, this is an exciting time to be in this space, right? We look at the challenges of managing Windows 10. We look at the security issues of GDPR. Um, you know, and uh, people are just really gravitating towards towards this idea of a Linux OS. Right. It's funny. It's not not directly uh, related, but 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 corollary. You know, as Google really pushes Chromebooks right. um, as part of their enterprise play as a, as a much more secure platform with central control. And, and the fact I think Diane mentioned at the Google Cloud yep. show that we use like thirty seven different. Um, basically online applications to get work done these days, whether right. you're in your Salesforce application or Marketo or Gmail suite or, you know, so, so we're all basically browser-based application delivery. So it really does open up this opportunity for a thin client because you don't really need that much function exactly. beyond serving up that central. I talk to people HTTP. all the time to have fancy, you know, thousands of dollar laptops and they're like, all they do is hit a browser, right? right? And, the reality is, is that's where we're going, right? It's a pane of glass accessing um, data somewhere else right. and applications somewhere else, right? But the underlying operating system still needs to be secured. If you look at sort of the priorities of CIOs today, endpoint secure, security is number one, right? And inside of that, it's typically endpoint security as you know, the most important piece of it, right? And right. so that's really where iGel is having a, a, a wonderful time taking tremendous market share yeah, we moved from the time, just the time that I've been in the U.S. from seven to three, just in the sort of hardware part of it. Um, and yeah, we're just we're we're having a lot of fun, you know, growing an organization that's you know, when you're growing in triple digits, it's kind of a Cinderella moment for your career, right? right. right? So well, has different kind of challenges. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So is there is there a particular vertical? Or is there a particular? Um, uh, kind of business group within the companies that you guys use as a point of entry or I mean how do you which kind of yeah, you go so to market Yeah, so there's some very specific opportunity, right? Yeah, very specific uh, verticals where we're having great success. So hospitals are number one, 
We sold to 143 hospitals in the U.S. If you can believe that, and we're in pretty. And that was just last year. 143 hospitals in a typical, just one year. Or typical average, whatever whatever metric you want to use, is is how many OSs going into a hospital? I mean, uh, last quarter we we sold about 10,000 into one hospital. Uh, you know, it's usually anywhere from 2,500 to for 5,000, 10,000. And then, you know, these hospitals are all merging with each other. That's right. another value of right. iGel is that they're all kind of uh, combining. And as they combine, iGel can take all this heterogeneous hardware, heterogeneous operating systems, homogenize it, make it easy to manage so and secure. The same spot. So yeah, it's definitely health, healthcare's number one, but we're also doing very well in retail, very well in finance, kind of banks, uh, really well in higher education. And like I said, yeah, we're, we're getting to talk to at the C-level, right? They really love the savings, right? Not only are they saving on the hardware, but they can get rid of antivirus, disk encryption. They can redeploy people to do things other than patching devices. We have some brilliant things in terms of the technology. I mean, you, you mentioned we have the IP of, of 20 years. Right, the right. three guys who wrote the code at the very beginning of the 20 years ago, actually they were with an iGel version before the current iteration, so literally in the end of the 90s, we were idea was let's build an operating system for the internet, which, you know, they may have been a bit ahead of their time in 1999, right, right. but those three guys are actually still in the building. There's a hundred engineers in Germany that are sort of iterating on this and solving for this problem. And I think they've, you know, now with the US operation and uh, the new marketing, yeah, you know, we're kind of, it's just a perfect mo storm, I right, would say. Right. And then with 5G, and again, the, the increasing importance of cloud-based applications, whether it be exactly. Salesforce or whether it be whatever that's delivered through Amazon, I mean, you guys are in a, in a very good spot. Yeah, and it, I would tell you, it's, it's not just about, uh, you know, it's, this, it's this operating system fused to a management console, but right. then it's sort of the curation of that, right? Like, okay, every 12 weeks, I'm going to push you a new OS, and I have an elegant way to get that to tens of thousands of devices. So we're also starting to see managed service providers, right? The guys that are uh, under contract to manage millions of devices, you know, the DXCs and WIDPros and IBM Global Services, those guys are starting to really look at iGel also, right? Because for the same reasons, the enterprises right. who are managing large environments. Right. Um, so that's been an exciting part of our growth. Yeah, and that's, well. a, that's another huge validation point because those guys don't make big, they don't make small bets, they only make big bets. Exactly, and we're just sort of hardened into their architecture, which is great. Right, All right, Jed, well, it sounds like a great story and we look forward to uh, to watching it unfold over the next couple of years. Yeah, well, uh, hopefully for the, for those of the people out watching, we'd love to have them come by. We're doing an event in Las Vegas inside of the Mandalay Bay um, at VMworld. Okay. Um, we, we actually have our own event, uh, rightfully called Disrupt. Um, and we're uh, we're going to be there from the 26th to the 29th, and what uh, in the Border Grill. So we've actually taken over this restaurant. It's okay. kind of like right, you know, in the footpath of in the hallway, right? In the hallway, on the yeah. So side. I know exactly where that is. So yeah, we're actually taking a page out of your book. We're going to have a little EUC TV. So we'll be interviewing people about you know what they're doing to solve for their end user compute challenges and talking to the ecosystem. Uh, we have an innovation theater in the uh, in the Border Grill. We're going to throw a pool party at the end um, out at one of those beautiful pools that no one ever gets to go to in Vegas. <laughs> we look at it though yeah. as we walk just past the border grill, you can find that exactly. the long, beautiful look at that pool. So we're going to try to take advantage of it, although it'll be a bit hot out there. Uh, yeah, it's 100 plus degrees in Vegas this time of year, but we're going to have some fun and yeah, you got to do that a little bit. Right. We work hard, play hard. All right, we'll see you in Vegas in a couple of weeks. Yep, All right. look forward to it. Thanks for Thanks stopping Thanks very by. much. All right, he's Jed, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE Conversation from our Palo Alto studios. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.